This is my Bible, the Word of God. Today, the Word of God will transform me. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture focus for today is found in Matthew chapter 28, starting verse 16, and it reads this way. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Can you grab your neighbor by the hand as we go to God in prayer? I would that you would consider for the next couple of moments the theme around this sacred text. This is the third installment of a message that we started a handful of weeks ago called The Exit Interview. The Exit interview. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, it's the precious, holy, and matchless name of he who is our Christ that we come once again to say good morning. Thank you for the privilege and the honor for gathering in this place around your word according to your purpose. Now, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Have your way. Move in your own will according to your way so that we might be able to know that we have been with you. Transform us in such a way that we don't leave the same way that we came in. But save someone, heal someone, deliver and set a captive free for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may have your seat in the presence of our God. I would like to bring to your attention, if you've never had the opportunity of um, joining us through our mobile church, then please uh, don't hesitate to join us by uh, texting uh, NVKLC to 40691. I'll say it one more time. Uh, if you would like to be able to not only hear this message when we do it live, but would like to also make sure that you get it when we send it out weekly, then you can just simply text pound NVKLC to the number 40691. And that way you'll continue to stay informed and connected to what is happening here and the messages that go forward. So without further ado, I do want to deposit this message that's been in my spirit for a little while into your hearts so that God might get the glory. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Matt, you know what they call a fellow who has finished last in medical school, what they call him at his graduation? They call him doctor. <laughs> It really doesn't make a difference. Uh, the placement of your graduation, it really comes down to the fact that you graduated. Amen. Amen. Two, two weeks back, we made a case for the difference between competing and completing, pointing out the difference between coming and quitting. Today, may I suggest to you that there is a difference between quitting and committing. That, that where you finish is not nearly as important as that you finish. That's right. Foundational to the faith of the believer is that we apply ourselves to finishing what we start. It's so easy to allow discouragement along the way to disqualify us or to put some distance between what we know to do and what we actually end up doing. Mm -hmm. One of the crushing secrets of the saints is the depression and the disappointment that sets in when truth and reality collide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I have anybody in here who, who recognizes and knows, has a little bit of history uh, with what the enemy can do when uh, there is a distance between what we thought we would be or who we thought we would become and, and what we actually ended up becoming in light of the fact that we did not become who we thought we would be. <laughs> you see, nobody really talks about the fact that there's this area that exists 
where the enemy tends to play this ping pong game with our hearts and our minds when what we thought Donna we would do and what we believed we would be did not end up becoming who and what you see. Amen. I stopped by here in order to tell someone, it's really not about how fast or how strong you are, it's really about how you finish. Amen. It's not about how fast you get to the finish line. It's not how strong you perform along the way. It's really about do you finish. finish. In Ecclesiastes chapter number 9, verse 11, it says this. The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 13, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. James picks up on the same theme in chapter 1, verse 12, and says this, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast mm -hmm. under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Yes. Starting may seem like a daunting task, and oftentimes starting is, but you only get the prize when you finish. <laughs> Anybody can start something, but there will be no medals, there will be no trophies, there will be no reward for starting. You will only receive what is promised for the battle and the race that you are in if you finish. Could you imagine going through everything you have had to endure and not getting something for it? My mm -hmm. Lord. Jesus. Mm -hmm. All of the scars, mm -hmm. the sleepless nights, mm -hmm. the pain and the agony, mm -hmm. the disrespect and the disregard, mm -hmm. <clears throat> And you don't finish? Jesus. Did you go through all of that for nothing? Well. The prize, the reward, is only given out to those who finish. For the last few weeks, we have um, drawn our attention to a very familiar passage of Scripture, the Great Commission. In so doing, we are viewing it as the criteria set by Christ to which his followers are to apply themselves to if we are to please God the Father in time in order to enter eternity as promised through the Bible. We've tagged this message as the exit interview. From a human perspective, exit interviews are interviews conducted with departing employees just before they leave. The primary aim traditionally is to learn reasons for the person's departure on the basis that criticism is a helpful driver for organizational improvement. Right. Uh, from, from a spiritual perspective, however, God will judge us according uh, to scripture based on what we have done as we exit this life in order to assign us where in eternity he puts us. It's, it's not rather or not we will find ourselves having an assignment. It's just a matter of where our assignment will land. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I used to tell folks all the time, and I, I, I found, Mac, that I haven't said this in a little while. Everybody has eternal life. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, me, the people there, Amen. on the street. Amen. Everybody has eternal life. <laughs> The only question is, where you going to spend it? Yeah. Therefore, there are some things in light of this truth that we need to keep in view. So if you don't mind, I want to give a little bit of a recap because uh, it's been two weeks since we've approached this subject because on last week, well, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we attempted to share a message and uh, um, if you were in the house, just say amen. Amen. So here's the context, and it's based off of verses 16 and 17. Uh, it, the, the context is that everybody who is here will not go there. Right. And, and I don't mean technically in this building or in this room, but I do mean everybody in your life uh, will not end up in heaven. Some people are seasonal. Some people are eternal. You don't get to choose them. And according to verses 16 and 17, it becomes very clear that everybody that started out will not finish. Amen. Amen. 
It's a sobering reality that we all need to come to terms with because sometimes we allow our eternity to hinge off of the fact that the person who started sitting next to us in service ain't sitting next to us now. Amen. 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 We, we, we let the trials and the tribulations, the storms and the pain in other people's lives distract us from the thing that God has called and created us to do. And as a result, we end up putting our very lives in jeopardy. So Jesus tells us here in the first couple of verses here in our pericope to let us know that everybody that's with you ain't going to go. So get your mind focused on the right thing. The second thing is seeing is not always believing. <laughs> See, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Can I say that everybody that's sitting next to you, they may stay next to you, but they still will not worship? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, just because you see them in service doesn't necessarily mean that they are worshiping God. Because seeing ain't always believing. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the truth of the matter is that our emotions only have value in time. Once we cross over into eternity, only the spirit makes the journey. So it's really important that we don't allow the mechanics of religion to put us into a false sense of security. If your heart ain't in it, it makes no difference what your body is doing. Amen? Because there's a whole lot of people who know how to perform. Oh, you look like the church and you sound like the church, but your heart is away from God. Yeah. So the real sign of authentic maturity is that uh, you find yourself doing what he commanded you to do, even when your body and everything else. It's raining out. I don't, I, I just, I just. God won't mind if I stay at Bedside Baptist. He said, enter into his gates. Not to stay in the bed. <laughs> I ain't going to get no help. L lastly, lastly, there, 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 there's only one authority. I'm still setting the context. I'm still setting the context. Not everybody will go. Seeing is not always believing. And that there's only one authority. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Relationship to Christ matters. Knowing him is not the same as being kin to him. Relationship matters. Knowing him is not the same as being kin to him because the Bible records that even the demons know him. Yeah. Right, 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 right. But they're not related to him. Yeah. So an awareness of him is not the same as being related to Thank him. You. Amen. For it's only through Christ Jesus that we can know the Father and Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Though all roads lead to God, no one but Christ can stand holy enough in his presence. And how we relate to Christ in time determines how we will relate to God in eternity. Mm. This is the context that we've set. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks ago, we introduced the phase, phase one of the content we, we, we come to Christ in order to know God so that we can go, sow, and invest in who we connect with in order to make a dynamic difference for God. Yeah. We, we come to know God through Christ, but then we leave to go to make God known. Right. Amen? Amen? Today's assignment is to move into phase two of the content. So if you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, if you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. To, to make a dynamic difference for God, we have to accept to be different dynamically. Mm -hmm. wow. Can I say that one more time? In order to make a dynamic difference for God, you have to accept to be different dynamically. As Christians, we are to engage the world. However, uh, in order to be a Christian, you cannot be worldly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta learn how to tango, and you gotta stay in step because if you lose your step, you're off. Yes, yeah. that's right. You're out of place. You, you just need to come off the stage. And anyone who would say that to be a Christian does not require exclusivity is really being disingenuous. Can, can, can we be honest? Can we talk? Can we act like it's just you and I sitting down at a table talking about what it really means to follow Christ? 
So you see the idea that uh, there is not an exclusive requirement to be a Christian is, is really a false bill of goods because the truth of the matter is the very defi de definition of religion requires exclusivity. If, if, if all were inclusive, there would be no need for any at all. Amen. If everybody was allowed to act the way they wanted to and believe what they wanted to, by default, you are excluding anyone outside of yourself. The practice of our faith requires practice. Amen. 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 It, it just does not come naturally because what comes naturally is an exclusion from what is holy. Mm. Mm. Say that. So, so since holiness can't touch naturalness, right. if we want to go where he is, we've got to practice to be like him. Amen. Amen. There, there are components that, that do not come naturally to us. Therefore, they are issued by command. Mm -hmm. And the very fact that they are issued by command requires disciplined repetition. Wow. One of the components is to have a working apologetic of the doctrine of the Trinity. One of, the component, one of the components that we are commanded to have is a working definition of the apologetic of the doctrine of the Trinity. Okay. And here, here in phase two of our content, the text says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? Amen. Amen. Like Jews and Muslims, Christians are monotheistic which means to believe in the existence of precisely one God. Unlike other monotheists, however, Christians also believe that while there exists just one God, he is three persons, Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The belief that the one and only God exists eternally as three persons is known as the doctrine of the Trinity. Yeah. And this doctrine plays a critical role in the life of a Christian. The, 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 the one and only true God has decided to manifest himself in a triune way. Uh, on the surface, however, I do acknowledge that this may appear to be a contradiction. For how can God be one and three at the same time? Yeah. Well, to, to that, um, I offer this. The doctrine of the Trinity is not one plus one plus one, which clearly equals three. But the doctrine of the Trinity is one times one times one, which equals one. From the very beginning, God has communicated his very nature, not in the form or the discipline of addition, but in multiplication. Be fruitful. He told this to the one he created in his image. Amen. Amen. The doctrine of the Trinity from the beginning throughout Scripture has revealed him as both one and three in order to establish allegiance and relationship. We have a singular focus, the oneness of God, which is vertical. But then we have a dynamic effect, which is horizontal. Mm -hmm. In Genesis 1, 26, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Hmm. In Deuteronomy 6 and 4, he says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Just in those two texts alone, he just displayed himself as multiple right. mm -hmm. and as singular. Lord, have mercy. Oh, yes. In Matthew 6, uh, Matthew 3, 16 through 17, uh, it says this. 
And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descend like a dove coming to rest on him, and behold, a voice of heaven said, This is my Son, whom I'm well pleased with. Right there, in those two right. verses, you have all three persons of the Trinity. Yes. The Father is speaking, the Son is standing, and the Spirit is descending. Yes. There, there, there's just one God, yet he is three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. This is the dynamic difference from all other religious beliefs. Therefore, it requires indoctrination. It, it, it requires the process of teaching a person what this belief really means from an uncritical position if it is to be understood and ultimately duplicated. Mm -hmm. So how do we do it? Well, I got two things. I'm gonna drop it to your spirit. I'm gonna leave you alone. You all right? Yes. This is how we do it in order to make a dynamic difference for God to be dynamic ourselves, uh, the first thing we have to do, it is through admittance. It's through admittance. Uh, what, what does that mean? Well, it just simply means you got to be baptized. In, in order to, to understand how to become dynamic so you can make a dynamic difference, which is what being a Christian is called to be, you have to be admitted which is nothing more than saying you got to be baptized because you cannot understand if you're standing outside. Amen. <sighs> Baptism is the symbolic act of purification for the regeneration and admission into the family of God through faith in Christ the Lord. Bonhoeffer, a 20th century theologian and pastor, said it this way. Baptism is not an offer made by man to God, but an offer made by Christ to man. In baptism, man becomes Christ's own possession. From the moment he belongs to Jesus Christ, he is wrestled from the dominion of the world and passes into the ownership of Christ. Amen. Baptism is a breach it is where Christ invades the realm of Satan, lays hands on his own, and creates for himself his church. Yeah. Mm. By this act, past and present are torn asunder. The old order is passed away, and behold, mm. all things are made new. Yes. Oh, if you only understood what happened when you got baptized, you'd never be the same again. Romans 6 and 6 says it this way. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Mm -hmm. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Mm -hmm. Baptismal death means justification from sin. Sin has no further claim on us, for death's demands have been met and its account settled. Amen. Justification for sin can only happen through death. Forgiveness of sin does not mean that the sin is overlooked and forgotten. It means that a real death on the part of the sinner and a separation from sin. But the only reason why the sinner's death can bring justification and not condemnation is that his death is in sharing the death of Christ. Mm. Okay. If you die in your sins without Christ, condemnation will catch you. Ooh. But baptismal death is to die from your sins so that you can live with Christ before you die. Amen. Amen. It, it is to handle justly what has occurred to you by what he died for, which is why it is not an account of man trying to earn his way into God. It is what Jesus did in an effort to enter us into a relationship with God. Yeah. Yes. It, it is 
baptism into death, into the death of Christ, which affects the forgiveness of sin and justification and completes our separation from sin. Mm -hmm. Baptism means we are admitted into the family of God and we have exited our relationship with the world. You cannot be in here and out there at the same time. Amen. Yes. Amen. You cannot enjoy the mm -hmm. privilege of being dry under this roof and complain about being wet Come on. out in the street. Come on. Come on. You, you cannot love God and be in love with the world at the same time. Wow. You cannot be faithful to him and, and faithful to them. You, you will love one and you will hate the other. You, you will be devoted to one and you will despise the other. You cannot live for God and for the world at the same time. Secondly, it's not only by admission, but by administration. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I got to pause just for a moment and just say, see, too, too often we've allowed people to straddle the fence. Mm. Hello. And, 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 and that's why we ain't got no power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be, because God has already proven mm -hmm. all you got to do is go to Exodus chapter number 20. He said, thou shalt have no other. Either I'm God over all, all. Come on. or I'm not God not at all. all. Come on. So, so understand, either you come to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not only by admission, you got to come in, mm -hmm. but it's also by administration. I'm still in the text. Uh, it, it, the dynamic difference of the Christian life comes through baptism by the name. Okay? Uh, I'm in the text where it says, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? Right. Baptism must be administered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is by the authority of heaven and not by man. Amen. Uh, yes. It is by the authority of heaven and not by man, the three-person Godhead, which scripture reveals was present in creation, is present in redemption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. just, just like it, it took the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us make man. Let us create. He was present and revealed himself through scripture in the creation. When you become brand new, he also must be present. Yeah. Amen. You cannot have spiritual access without the authority of heaven. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. If you attempt to tap into the spirit without the Godhead, you are dealing in the demonic. If the Godhead wasn't present in order to enter you into the spirit, I promise you, no matter how it might dress itself up, it's not God. As Christians, we have our commission under the great seal of heaven. Therefore, in being baptized, we profess to the scriptural revelation concerning God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We confess our belief in the Trinity. For in the Father, we were baptized. Because it was the Father that begets. Amen. But believing God to be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by eternal generation and our Father because he is our creator. The one who brought all things into being. He is our preserver. The one who maintains all there is perfectly. And he is our benefactor. The one who gives everything we need. It's in the name of the Father that we enter into a dynamic relationship. We enter into this relationship with God the Father. In that name, we resign ourselves to him as our absolute owner and propitiator to activate us and to discharge our usefulness as our supreme rector and governor. 
It is to his rule and by his law, he is our chief good and our highest end. Amen. But not only in the name of the Father, but we also confess our belief in the name of the Son, the begotten, into the name of the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, collator to the Father, we take Christ to be our prophet, the one regarded as our teacher and proclaimer of the will of God. We take Christ to be not only our prophet, but our priest, the one authority to perform the rites and to administer the sacrifice. We take Christ not only to be our prophet and our priest, but also to be our king, the one sovereign monarch who is capable in himself to both rule and to reign. To him we give ourselves to be taught and saved and ordered by him. But lastly, we profess our belief and enter into a relationship with God in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who's both. <laughs> he begets and he's begotten. Amen. It's in the name of the Holy Spirit, that we acknowledge it is him who brings all things into existence and is the evidence that they exist. Amen. Amen. We take him to be our sanctifier, the one who sets us apart to be declared, to be declared holy. We take him to be our teacher, the one who instructs us. We take the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, the one who provides consolation, in him, we give ourselves to his conduct and to his operation. It is by his spirit we move, we breathe, and we have our very being. To make a dynamic difference for God, we have to accept and be different dynamically. Ray, I can't tell you. How many people complain about things that they are actually empowered to do? Come on now. But they've never plugged in to the source of their power because they never understood who they're connected to. You ain't like everybody else. Amen. Amen. There's, there is no comparison to what God can and is willing to do through you. Amen. Yes, the rain falls on us all. Yeah. But have courage. Yeah. Be encouraged. Take heart. For Christ has overcome the world. How dare you let disappointment and discouragement disqualify you? Yes, if you were left to your own strength, then yeah, you're justified in getting upset and throwing in the towel like everybody else. But you have been entered into an eternal relationship and you are governed by an eternal power. So therefore, how valuable is your strength? Why would you even attempt to rely on your strength? For the Bible tells us that when we are weak, then we are made strong. God is just waiting for you to take your hands off of it. To make a dynamic difference for God, we have to accept the fact that we are different dynamically. We have to apply ourselves to finishing because... Mm. He who begun a good work in yes. you. Lord, I got to get out of here. I, I'm at the end, so hold on. He who begun a good work in you, in you is faithful to perform it to the day of Christ. In other words, it is him who's going to finish what he started in you. As long as you keep trying to finish what you start, you will always want to quit. You will always want to throw in the towel. It will always be more than you can handle because he is the one who started it, not Amen. 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 Amen.
when I entered into my relationship with God, he now administers everything in my life. The confusion comes in when I act like I'm still of the world. Yes. I have twisted myself up. Either I'm with him or I'm not. Amen. Mm, I heard you. This is not a friends with benefits. <laughs> Commit. Live. Lest you die. Because if you don't live for him, you will die with them. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Oh, God. We're, we're in the world. But not of the world. But not of the world. What everybody else is tripping over, uh -huh. he's going to navigate me around. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me say this, because I hear you, God. I hear you, God. There are some things... And there's some spaces, and there are some places he intentionally brings me to. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm at the end of the message. I got I to. There are some things, there are some places, and there are some spaces he intentionally brings me to. And he brings me there so that I might be an example there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. He enters me into trouble Come on. so that I can show trouble. What peace looks like. Uh, come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and as my old pastor said, and a bad Negro. <laughs> Though Nebuchadnezzar thought that he was king and decided to throw these three Hebrew boys into the fiery furnace, check what they said to him. King, I hear you, but I'm still following the king. Yeah. Mm. Now know this. Our God can deliver us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if he chooses not to, he's still God. Yes, yes. Now let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. Because either you're going to be with him yeah. or you're not. Yeah. He's either going to be God over all. Or he ain't God at all. And you cannot allow your situations nor your circumstances to get you to renege on the deal. Yes. Yes. The situation does not determine the fact that he's God. God determines that he's God. And he can if he chooses to change the situation. So they go and they tell the king that, yo, for God I live, for God I die, Blessed be the name That's right. of the Lord our God. And they get cast into the fire. Mm -hmm. For all those saints that think that because you are now in relationship with God, you don't have to deal with fires, uh, let me help you. No, no, baby. Sometimes God puts you in the fire in order to show you you are fireproof. If you 
you only knew what it meant to be in a relationship yes. with God. Mm -hmm. When you enter into, yes. you are now administered by mm -hmm. for the steps of those that are right with God yes. are ordered by the Lord. When we surrender ourselves to Christ, we can share the same dynamic promise that the Philippians were both confident and commended for in verse 1, in uh, chapter 1, verse 6 of Philippians, when it says, He who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ. So as we close, here's my question for you to consider as we approach another week. Who has your allegiance? Who are you focused on? In this life, who do you belong to? Because who you focus on will determine the power that you have when you go to do what you do. Mm -hmm. How we address this question will determine how we finish. In our last message, I left you with a question that was based on an answer that would affect if we finished. It would affect if we would finish based off of how we relate to Christ. This week, I, I call us to wrestle with how we view what difference Christ makes in our lives. Mm -hmm. Last time, it was about how we relate to God, for we come to Christ to know God, and we go to make a dynamic difference for God. This week, it's about how God relates to us. He who is in you in this life will determine the kind of life you have. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I've come by here in order to share this message to tell you simply, mm -hmm. membership matters. I didn't anticipate this on being a shouter. We did that last week. Yes. This is to sow something into your heart and prayerfully get something into your head that would hold you yes. when the storms of life blow and the winds and the waves crash up against the bow of your life. You have something that anchors you to know that because I belong yes. to God, yes. that, that this world can do me no harm. That I'm just passing through because I got a home. I promise you, if you ever focus on the fact that you got a home that's not made by hands, whose maker and builder is God, whose foundation is set in eternity, time can do you no harm. I have a hope that's in heaven because I entered into that hope before I had to face heaven. And he's been ordering my steps from the day I gave him my heart. Thank you, God. So as we close, who has your allegiance? Who, who has it? And, and I don't mean lip service. That's, that's, that's easy. A lot of people say they are for him until something happens that they need to be against him. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are down with him until being with him brings you down. We serve a risen Savior. Lord, right. can I say it one more time? Yes. Woo, the crux of the Christian faith rests on the resurrection. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. That's the dynamic difference. But beloved, before you can have a resurrection, Something got to die. And, and if you are afraid of death, if you haven't approached how you're going to handle death, then you aren't really living. You're just existing. Amen. Amen. You're waiting to die. And Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, but you got to give me up yours first. Mm -hmm. to, to, to have what I have for you. Yes. An exchange must take place. Yeah. And if you will give me yours, I'll give you mine. Mm -hmm. Baptism mm -hmm. is what we were commanded to do. And not just die somebody asked you to. And not just die because a situation made you feel like you needed to. But die in the name of the Father. Die in the name of the Son. And die in the name of the Holy Spirit. And you will rise. So with heads bowed and eyes shut. I offer unto you Christ who commands us to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit if we are to be in fellowship with him. Beloved, if you have just been sitting on the sidelines, getting the residue of relationship, may I please, sir, please, ma'am, extend to you the full benefit of being a Christian. Can I challenge you to be dynamic? by offering you an opportunity to be different. If you want to be different, then you got to die. You got to die to everything you know. And I promise you, the same God that did it for me, God, he'll do it for you. He'll give you life brand new. So if there's anyone under the sound of my voice who is not in a relationship with God through Christ, just signal, just let me know. Stretch out your hand, open up your heart, and the King of Glory shall come in. God, we thank you. Father, I pray right now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart that were expressed in this moment were pleasing to you. But if by chance something was said or understood that was not in alignment with your will, according to your word, and assigned to this moment, then remove this impression, this encounter from the hearts and the minds of your people so that we do not sin against you. But if by chance we have been where you wanted us to be and done what you have called and commanded us to do, hide this word in our heart that we might not sin against you. Move, God. Move, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together and bless them?